Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. Let's work a little more on the UWS-1 design and we'll talk about ailerons for the wing. I want to start building some of the parts for the UWS-1 Ultralight this summer. So we need to keep progressing on the design. We've got quite a bit worked out on the main wing for the airplane. Next, let's talk a little more about the ailerons and options for the ailerons. In the last video for the UWS-1 design, we talked about wing size and how the flap configuration on the main wing will affect the wing size. When we're talking about flaps and the wings, we also need to talk about ailerons. For the moment, when I use the term ailerons, I'm really talking generically, some mechanism for controlling roll of the airplane. Well, let's get started. Let me reiterate, when I use the word aileron here, I'm really talking about a mechanism that moves to help control the roll of the airplane. And when I say flap, I'm talking about a high lift device on the trailing edge of the wing. Generally, you're going to design your ailerons and flaps together, particularly if they are both trailing edge devices. They can't overlap. So we have, in this case, three general configurations of your aileron and flaps. One would be ailerons with absolutely no flaps. In this case, your ailerons could be any portion of the span. You generally won't have ailerons be less than 25% of the span. And they will almost always be out near the tip of the wing. And the reason for that is the farther out they are, the greater moment arm they can exert on the airplane. And the easier it is for those ailerons to roll the airplane. Like I said, you can have down to 25% span ailerons and you can have full span ailerons. In general, if you're going to have full span ailerons, the cord of those ailerons are going to be kind of small, maybe 15% of the cord. If you're going to have 25% span ailerons, you'll have a much larger cord generally, maybe up to 25% of the cord of the wing. You can also have a combination of partial span ailerons and partial span flaps. And that could be anywhere from 30% flaps up to 70% flaps, and then the rest of the wing taken up by ailerons. Although you can also have some of the wing taken up by fuselage and engine nacelles. And then lastly, you can have ailerons and full span flaps. But in this case, your ailerons typically will not be trailing edge devices. They'll generally be a little bit farther forward on the wing. And there'll be something like spoilers or slots that are used to control roll. Although there is an exception to that, something called split ailerons, which are used both as flaps and ailerons, and you could also have flapperons that can be full span. That's just a combination of aileron and flaps. If you are going to go with the configuration of ailerons with no flaps, typically your aileron is going to be something called a trailing edge flap type. And over here on the left hand side, we've got a group of trailing edge flap type ailerons. Now it also happens to be that many of these flap type ailerons can also be used for high lift devices. In other words, for just plain high lift flaps. And these ailerons over here can be used in combination with partial span ailerons and partial span flaps. Now, what are the advantages of having ailerons with no flaps? Well, number one, your construction is going to be very simple, particularly if you have partial span ailerons. That means that a portion of your wing is simply going to be spars and ribs nothing complicated at all. And this really helps with low construction weight. But what's the drawback to that? Well, generally, if you're not going to have flaps, you're going to have to have a larger wing. And if you have a larger wing, you're going to have more weight. So there's kind of a trade-off between decreased weight because of simpler construction, but increased weight because you have to make a larger wing. Another pro, though, for the no flap configuration and it goes along with the simple construction it's much faster to construct. These images over here came from Horner's fluid dynamic lift book and we'll talk a little bit about 
some of the characteristics of these various types of trailing edge flaps that are used for ailerons. This is really probably the most common one, especially on very light planes and ultralights. It's called the plane flap. It has the contour of the airfoil all the way back. And the hinge point is the same distance from the nose of the aileron as it is to the top or bottom of the aileron. And that's what makes it plain. So as this flap is moving up and down, there's really no difference in the position of the top or the bottom or this gap. Next one is called a blunt overhang balance. In this case, you're trying to do a little bit of aerodynamic balancing. One of the drawbacks of the plane flap, especially at higher speeds, is that the more you try to deflect this plane flap, the harder it gets to push it on the stick. Much more difficult. And in very high speeds, it can be very, very difficult. And in fact, you probably don't want to use it on your elevator because many airplanes use this plane flap on the elevator. Now on ultralights, it's not that big a deal. We have very slow speeds. Our maximum level flight cruise speed is 65 miles an hour. So in general, you're not gonna get up to high speeds and plane flaps work okay. But on faster airplanes, you want to do this balancing. So what you end up doing then is moving the hinge point from this location farther aft. That means more of the aileron is now in front of the hinge. And as you deflect the aileron, you've got aerodynamic forces in front of the hinge that are starting to a little bit balance out aerodynamic forces in the back of the hinge. You don't want to completely balance out. You don't want to move this hinge to where it's at a neutral position where the forces are equal in front of and behind the hinge as you're deflecting this flap because then you're not getting feedback on how far it's deflected and how much force it's exerting on the airplane. So you're still going to want to have it in front at that neutral point. Another thing that having this nose out in front does is it provides a little bit of static balance. In other words, there's a little bit of weight in front of the hinge now to help balance the weight behind the hinge. And that helps with reducing the chances of flutter. And speaking of that, this next one down with internal balance does exactly that. You're adding weight in front of the hinge to help balance the weight behind it. And this is strictly for reducing flutter. It does nothing for dynamic balancing, in other words, aerodynamic balancing, but it does help with the weight balancing, static balancing. We generally will not do this in ultralights because it only adds weight. We're at such slow speeds that flutter generally, not always, but generally is not an issue. So you'll not normally see this on ultralights. Next kind of flap aileron is the slotted flap, and you may recognize this from the last video. We were talking about high lift devices on the trailing edge. It's basically the same concept. About the only difference is the hinge point, instead of being far down, is much closer to the aileron. So again, if you'll remember, the idea is that you have high pressure area on the bottom coming up through the slot and being shot out over the very top tangent to the top of the aileron airfoil. That helps re-energize this boundary layer and delays separation when you start deflecting this airfoil. It helps re reduce drag, at least in the lower deflection angles. Of course, when you get up to a far enough point, you will still get separation. Another thing it does, when you start deflecting it up, when you're trying to roll your airplane, this nose will dip down. And you're going to start creating drag here behind this nose as it dips down into the airstream. What this does is it helps with the adverse yaw. It's going to create more drag on the wing that's trying to go down, pulling that wing tip back. Let's go back up and talk about the plane flap a little bit. One of the issues that you have with the plane flap is adverse yaw. When you're deflecting this flap down, you're increasing the coefficient of lift and increasing the drag significantly. When you deflect upwards, you're actually reducing the drag in the first, oh, five degrees or so deflection, you're generally going to be reducing the drag of the airplane. So you're doing the exact opposite of what you want. The wingtip that's going down 
has less drag, the wingtip that's going up has more drag, and it actually points the nose in the opposite direction of where you want to go. This design is to help alleviate that. So when you're deflecting down, you're not getting separation, so you're getting very little increased drag, at least in these smaller deflections. When you deflect up, you're increasing drag, so you're basically doing almost the opposite, almost, of what the plane flap's doing. So you're getting the yaw that you want. You're getting yaw into the direction of your turn. Next is the freeze style of aileron. It has some similarities to the slotted aileron, where when you deflect the flap upwards, the nose dips down into the airstream underneath the airfoil. But due to the sharp edge of the nose, you immediately get separation and drag. And the purpose for this is again to try to treat the adverse yaw situation. So the wing tip that is dipping down would have more drag. I won't get much into the tab balanced aileron, but the purpose of the tab here at the back end is to help reduce the hinge moment force when you're deflecting the aileron. So you deflect this tab in the opposite direction that the aileron is deflecting. Next we get into the more conventional configuration of partial span flaps and partial span ailerons. And typically you'll have the flaps inboard and you'll have the ailerons outboard. And again, that is so that you have more control of the wing when you have the root stalling first, hopefully. The wing tip not yet stalling, and so you still have a little bit of roll control of the airplane as you're entering the stall. So what are the pros for having this kind of a configuration? Well, you can certainly get higher lift than you can with the configuration of no flaps at all. And that gives you the possibility of having a smaller wing, which again gives you the possibility of less drag. Of course, that lift depends on the type of flap and the span of your flap, how much of the wing span that flap is taking up. And with a smaller wing, you have the potential for lower weight. Although, when the cons come into play, maybe, maybe not. You're going to be a little bit more complicated when you're adding flaps in. I mean, you've got twice as much control mechanism you have to run through the wing. Controls for aerons and controls for the flaps. And generally, flaps are just a little bit more complicated than ailerons. But not always. But because of the more complication, you're going to have to add some more weight, which may negate the possibility of having a smaller wing to save weight. The uh, types of flaps that you might use in this partial span situation I talked about in the previous design video on the wing plan form part two. And now we get to a different configuration that you don't see a whole lot, although you do see it on some Navy airplanes. And that's full span flaps with ailerons or some sort of roll control that will work with full span flaps. Now, if you can have full span flaps, what are, are the positives for that? Well, you're going to get the highest lift because you've got the most amount of flap you can get from the fuselage out to the wingtip. And this gives you the possibility of having the smallest wing. Of course, if you're on an aircraft carrier, that's a pretty good thing. So you have the potential for a lighter wing, but probably not. So let's get into the cons. Generally, if you've got trailing edge flaps along the entire length of the wing, you're not going to be able to have a flap type of aileron. You're going to have to have a non-flap type of aileron. Typically, those are going to be a little bit complicated and then potentially heavier. I keep saying that the pros are a potentially lighter wing and the cons are a potentially heavier wing. And you'll just have to do some analysis to figure out whether it works or not, or what's more important. Maybe a smaller wing is more important and you don't care if it's heavier. Now there are a number of things that have been tried to work with full span flaps. And here's one example that I found that was kind of interesting. It's a plug type slot aileron. And it's kind of hard to tell from these pictures, but in normal flight, when you're at zero cruise, it's embedded within your airfoil, the bottom of it as at the bottom of the airfoil, the top of it's at the top of the airfoil. When you deflect it up, you're trying to get that wing tip to drop. It's hinged about here, and there is a plug 
that moves up. So here would be the top of the airfoil and it's going to extend down in a solid piece coming down except it's not completely solid it actually has some air slots here at the top edge. You can also swing it down so that when the top is here you swing it down it starts coming down in side the airfoil and it's actually going to extend down and arc forward so it, when you're coming down it does not extend very far down but it will produce a little bit of drag so really it's most effective when it comes up and there's just a small amount of impact when it's down so it's the wing that's trying to dip down that has the impact almost nothing on the wing that's going to come up so it acts like a spoiler Another variation used with slotted flaps is to have a slot lip that would be hinged here and this tip would hinge up. So it would act a little bit like a spoiler but it would let air escape up through, a lot of air escape up through and out. These are okay particularly when your flap is extended down at a fairly large deflection. They don't work as well when the flap is in a neutral position and that's Typically, and, it's, and this is also going to be true for the uh, plug type of spoiler, when you're only deflecting up about 5 degrees or so, your spoiler or lip is still roughly in the boundary layer. It's, it's not hardly having any effect. In fact, with this lip, you have to be a little bit careful because you can actually get more lift on the wing that you're trying to push down, so it actually does the opposite of what you want. And there have been some studies that have encountered that. And there are a lot of other variations. For example, slots that are up farther on the airfoil. One of the disadvantages of these slots, the farther forward you put it on the airfoil, the longer it takes for the action of the spoiler to occur. The closer it is to the trailing edge, the faster the reaction is. How can this type of situation where we have full span flaps and a different kind of aileron, whether it's full span or partial span, can get heavier. Well, let's think back to our previous page where we had partial span flaps and partial span ailerons. So ignoring all of this, it would have had a certain weight, whatever that would be. But if we had full span flaps, this area back here would still weigh the same. But now we're going to have to add ailerons and now we've really increased the weight but why is that we have to add a wall at the front and the back within the wing airfoil plus we have to add the aileron a wall back top and bottom so we've added a significant amount of weight roughly four walls within this area that we didn't have to have before plus all the control linkages. So that's going to add quite a bit of weight and that's why getting more complicated can add weight. Now another thing you can do for full span flaps is to combine your flaps and the ailerons together. So up here on the upper left you see a slotted flap but something that looks like a trim tab has been added to the trailing edge. So this would be your aileron and you could have it be the full span of the flap. When you want to roll, you just deflect this tab up or down. A drawback to this kind of flap is that when you have your slotted flap highly deflected, let's say down to 45 degrees or so, your trailing edge tab, your aileron, is less effective. But a nice thing is that it's pretty low drag. It's integrated into your flap. Another type of flap that's sometimes called a flapper on but more commonly it's referred to as a junkers flap and you'll actually see this on some light planes and some ultralights. In this case it operates similar to a slotted flap or you could think of it as an extended Fowler flap but in normal flight this would be in a flat zero degrees deflection and you've got a permanent slot that the air is flowing through. And then when you want it to act as an aileron on one wing you tilt it up, on the other one you tilt it down, it acts as an aileron. When you want it to be a flap, you deflect both sides down. But at the same time, you can still have it be an aileron. 
So they're both deflected down, but one would be deflected a little bit less than the other one. So you'd get a little bit of roll tendency. One of the drawbacks to this kind of flap is you've got drag, more drag than if it was directly integrated into the airfoil of the airplane. But it is very effective. Another kind of flap that you don't see very often is the split flap, where the top part is used as the aileron and the bottom part is used as the flap. This does have the advantage of being a fairly low drag, at least when you're not using it as a flap or an aileron. Of course, anytime you extend one side without the other, you're going to end up creating a significant amount of separation back here and a lot of drag. I think that's enough talking about ailerons here when combined with flaps. So the next thing to do is actually decide on the final configuration of the flaps and ailerons for the wing. Now previous to this, I had spent a significant amount of effort trying to figure out if I wanted to do full span flaps. I'm starting to back off on that idea and I will generate one more video on this airplane wing where I give a final decision, or at least mostly final, a decision on what I'm going to do with the flaps and ailerons. I want to get far enough along in this design that I can start making a few parts this summer, so I need to rapidly get on to working on figuring out the mean aerodynamic cord once I get the flaps and ailerons figured out and the wing size. Once I have that, I can figure out the moment arm of the wing, and then I can get to working on that horizontal tail. Once I get the horizontal tail worked out, I will start working on the vertical tail. Once I get that worked out, I can then design some of the structure for the rudders and start building some rudders. Well, as you can tell, we still got a little bit of work to do before we can start building parts for the ultralight. I'm still working with the resin infusion of carbon fiber parts so I can get ready to start doing some of the structural analysis for the airplane. If you like some of this content, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell button.